German companies leaving civilian business for defense, this will be a big problem for Russia. More German companies are moving into military equipment and services, breaking the taboo on arms supplies after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Shares in engine maker Dutz jumped more than 20% last week after it said it would build tank engines alongside its motorcycle business, the Financial Times reports. The engineering group is among those reviewing or ending its ban on defense contracts. Some German businesses have long avoided ties to the defense sector due to the legacy of industrial collaboration with the Nazi regime. But since February 2022, some key players in the country's mechanical engineering supply chain, such as laser maker Trump and components firm Hor Hydraulic have set their sights on military contracts. Catherine Kluver Ashbrook, a political scientist and former director of the German Council on Foreign Relations, said long standing attitudes toward the defense sector are changing rapidly. After three years of war on the European continent with huge economic losses, Germany seems ready to make a historic shift. She said, the change in attitude comes after Olaf Scholz announced, shortly after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, a $100 billion fund to bolster Germany's defenses and modernize its armed forces. He plans to send an armored brigade to Lithuania, the first permanent overseas deployment in the country's modern history, and is reintroducing compulsory military service. Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine has undoubtedly heightened awareness in our society that freedom must be defended by military means if necessary, said Daimler Truck, which last month announced a new contract to supply 1,500 trucks to the Canadian military. Karl Horsgen, chairman of engineering company Haw Hydraulic, which lifted its ban on defense orders in 2022, said Russia's invasion of Ukraine and further push for Europe to increase its military spending had reduced the stigma around the defense sector. A lot of the defense supply chain has a very different image than it did three or four years ago, he said. The company previously had a rule not to supply products to the defense sector, but now its board level committee evaluates orders for valves and pumps that could be used in military equipment, including vehicles and ships. The change also comes as German industry struggles to recover from slumping demand from China. In contrast, to the booming defense sector, the country's auto industry has been forced to announce massive job cuts amid a tough transition to electric vehicles. Germany faced a situation opposite to Europe immediately after the Cold War when companies were faced with the need to convert military production to civilian production, said Christian Melling of the German Council of Foreign Relations. You're thinking how you can use civilian manufacturing capabilities, technologies and procedures to become more effective in the military world, he said. Continental, one of the world's leading suppliers to the automotive industry, has announced major job cuts but recently launched a scheme to transfer hundreds of its staff to German defense contractor Rheinmetall. Peter Sebastian Krauss, Rheinmetall's chief executive, said at the time that Continental employees would bring very valuable skills to the company. Russian servicemen who refuse to assault are tied to equipment and sent to the assault in Ukraine. Andriy Ochenash, the crew commander of the Kara Nebesna UAV with the 4th Rubies Operational Brigade of Ukraine, explains how the Russian command uses its personnel. He said this on Espresso TV. It seems that the Russians are sometimes more afraid to go back than to storm the positions of the armed forces. The invaders have different firing squads. Some Russian servicemen who refused to assault were tied to equipment and sent to the assault on the principle of survive or not survive. This is how they intimidate the personnel. They say that if one of them does not want to go on the assault, he will be shot, then everyone will be willing to go, said Otchenash. According to him, the Ukrainian Defense Forces and the Rubies Brigade are working to ensure that such an attitude does not exist in the occupied territories of Ukraine. Russia is an absolutely imperialistic country with an anti-human attitude. We are working to eventually free the temporarily occupied territories from this terrible oppression. We have met captives from the temporarily occupied territories who told us that they were offered three options. Go to the front, be shot or have their families threatened, he added. Today, Russia is very active in the area where the Rubies Brigade is holding the line, but the Ukrainian armed forces are fighting back, Otchenash said. The Ukrainian armed forces have repelled the enemy's last assaults quite successfully. Thanks to unmanned aerial systems and drops, about 20 Russians were eliminated. This is a good result and an indicator that the assault actions are increasing. Russia is trying to find weaknesses in the Ukrainian army. 
For their part, the armed forces are doing everything possible to stop the Russian offensive.